Hey guys, hey Paul. Yoni, how are you doing? Hey, hey, I'm doing good. Yeah, good to hear. I'll just say that when I travel, I learn to try to keep everything on the same time zone on you know, my devices. Otherwise, I'm, I don't even know where I'm at. So, on it. Good morning, everyone. Um, I apologize for the uh, last couple of weeks being deferred. Uh, so a couple of things. Um, so we have, uh, I think the, the deadline for uh, submitting talks for LCB Global Summit has uh, concluded. Uh, we do have the security track uh, date and time as of 45 minutes ago. Uh, it is October 16th from 12.30 to 5 p.m. Which, uh, what day of the week? I'm running that's a Thursday. October 16th. Oh, it's a Wednesday. Okay. Interesting. All right. 
Is that a, a reflection of uh, not having as many submissions, Jeff? Or uh, I haven't actually seen uh, uh, the number of submissions yet. I haven't taken a peek into the portal. Um, but I know that, I mean, I feel like there were quite a few, I mean, that I kind of knew about. Um, they haven't really, uh, let's see. Let me see if I can pull up. And Jeff, could you repeat those hours again, please? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, it is, so the October 16th security track from 12.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's during the OCP uh, summit, right? Yeah, the global summit in San Jose. Okay. Um, I have not yet received an email from Kate saying go review things and I I've been I just tried to go to a link I knew about and I can't click on that summit option. So uh, so I'm not quite sure exactly how many uh, submissions have been received. I, I was just curious. It sounds like a shorter time slot than we've had the last couple of years. That's all. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm I'm surprised that it's on Wednesday. I, I kind of I feel like it's always been on the last day of the summit. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Um, okay, other thing received a sorry if you heard my dog snoring. Um, a deck from leadership. Um, the CTO of OCP. Uh, so there's this new thing. A uh, basically an AI umbrella initiative. Let me throw this up on the screen. So I haven't looked closely through this deck yet, but uh, this describes kind of a cross org or cross project effort to do AI. Um, I'm happy to to show this deck out, but basically, um, I'm just going to summarize from the email I received. There's got, got 12 projects, over 100 work streams, make 100 contributions per year. Um, it's very decentralized. Um, so, the question was, what does uh, OCP as an organization want to do for AI? Um, they want to uh, get a good long term vision on the horizon and planning and systems level. So uh, yeah, current solid efforts to build the AI data center are not holistic and are leading to solution fragmentation, delaying deployments and increasing costs. Opportunity to leverage OCP hyperscale at community, extend Alliance partners and trusted IP model to enable open AI systems at rack level. To the version of Zoom. Sorry? What was that? Okay. So, the strategic initiative 2024 was open systems for AI, develop rack level AI systems, hardware, firmware management, and validation. Long-term view, deliver open AI system evolution, shorter term tactics, ensure current project efforts align to AI initiative, launch new work streams if necessary, launch new alliances where necessary. So leadership mandate February of this year, tactical initiative April, May of this year, first approved contributions through quarter of this year. So, I mean, I just received this deck this last week, so, um, yeah, not quite sure where we are there. Vertically integrated AI systems. So we have DC IT infrastructure, physical infrastructure, and systems management. Looks like so they're putting security over here in IT infrastructure. Uh, although I, I mean, I think I, we don't need to constrain ourselves necessarily to what we work on but this is where they want to put us on the slide deck. Hmm. 
Here's the uh, org chart in case it's interesting. Short-term AI map. So composable disaggregated infrastructure for system. Uh, is it cooling? AI Nix. Uh, hardware management. Resilience, sound data encryption management. GPU accelerated rest requirements. I believe we have, there exist work streams for tackling those things. Um, the next slide has work that they have identified for security. Um, chiplets in-memory encryption and safe outside storage. I believe this means uh, safe reviews that are not scoped specifically to storage devices. So potentially a uh, confidential compute implementation review uh, or TDISP. So they, they haven't like, th this is not a list of, hey, we, we, we've thought really hard and we want you guys to focus on this. Uh, this is um, the starting point and they invite us to think about what efforts uh, may be needed from security that we can contribute. Alliances, CXL, ECIE, JEDEC, DMTF. I don't see TCG represented here. Probably should be on the list. Looks like we're in the uh, work streams and alliances phase of what they're thinking about here. And I don't think the other slides are have a lot there. Anyway, so any any uh, initial thoughts about this? Hey Jeff, uh, this is Lance from Micron. Um, on that prior slide, it talked about in-memory encryption. Yeah, there. Do you think that refers to CXL only, or do you think it's going further in speaking to DRAM, you know, DIMMs, that sort of thing? Do you have, or other people have thoughts about that? I would assume it meant uh, that it also extended into the letter. It's a pretty big step. Not not saying it's not good or necessary, but uh, that's a that's a huge step for DRAM if that's really what it's implying. Well, I mean, um, I, I, I gathered that it meant that, that it's implying like what's what's done for like confidential VMs. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And I'd like to say, you know, we, we've uh, we tackled encryption at rest, so encrypting hard drives and the storage media do it encrypted in transit. So now this is encryption in use. Um, so yeah. Good question though. I also see safe outside storage there. Can you shed some light on what is the context other than what is already being done with uh, safe currently? Yeah, so um this th this list was made by people, not me. 
Um, so I'm, I think that's just like their opening bit of what what they believe we worked on. Um, and so safe. Uh, what, what I think that they meant when they wrote this down was uh, extending or broadening the reach of the safe audit framework to focus on more kinds of devices like uh, perhaps GPUs, other accelerators. Yeah, thank you. Looks like we're using AI to broaden safe and uh, in-memory encryption and other things. Okay. Yeah, given how valuable these models are, it makes sense. At some point, Jeff, do you want to spend time in OCP expanding those items? Is is that that's where you're going? And... Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense to you know make sure that this list accurately reflects what we believe we can contribute. I mean, a lot of this doesn't really seem AI specific, right? You know, chiplets, memory encryption, et cetera. And so, I don't know. I just kind of wonder if this is just OCP jumping on the AI hype um, bandwagon and it's like, well, we got to do something. And so we want to, we want an initiative to announce. And so, well, let's come up with some stuff, but you know, it does, you know, the security bullets don't seem AI specific, right? So I don't know if there are really AI specific and security issues that we come up with, but um, I don't know. That's yeah, that, yeah, that's what I was wondering as well, uh, Stuart. Um, it looks like we, we our OCP wants to use AI as an accelerator to speed up these things, not yeah. necessarily unique to AI. You know, um, just sort of picking up on the comment about you know other security issues. I can tell you that the ISO committee subcommittee twenty seven has a couple of projects, 27091 um, is looking at AI security and risk, and then 27091 is looking at the privacy side of this. They're sort of mid-cycle, you know, ISO standards take about three years to develop. They're at probably at the 18 to 24 month time frame. So there are things that are, let me say, there are some unique things in both security and privacy uh, as compared to sort of regular standards and whatnot. So um, this just is a heads up on that. Okay. So heads up. I, I would also agree that um, like with the prior statement that, you know, uh, Perhaps AI might uh, alter the prioritization. Like maybe like now a security review of a GPU may be more interesting, um, but I don't think any of it's like specifically, or I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing much like AI specific focus for us in this group to, um, to work on. Like it, it's gonna raise all boats, right? But you know, never waste a good uh, push, I guess. Uh, if this is an opportunity for us to, I mean, there are definitely um, confidential compute uh, cases I've you know I hear about where it's like um, people want to, you know, if you want to deploy some kind of AI model or something to a, to a device, you know, it's it's considered you know very sensitive or you know. Uh, intellectual property and you want to protect it. And so you want a confidential VM of some kind to run, to run it. And so, I mean, that's, I guess, one place I see, mm -hmm. um, we said use case for confidential compute. Yeah, I think it, it, that's, I think, uh, I would agree. Like there are many things you'd want to use confidential compute for. It's not necessarily an AI machine. Right. It just right. so happens to be very useful for AI if you want to keep your models safe. Right. So that's probably what we use if we want to flesh this list out is what, what are the, all the things we care about security wise that happen to be quite useful for AI.
with triplets i don't i honestly don't know much about the state of things there what i mean possibly defining requirements for how secure interconnects would work with triplets um There, there is work on that in the UCLE forum, uh, Universal Chiplet Express. Uh, they have a security work group that's working on these things, but that work group is not open like OCP. So mm -hmm. share between them without an agreement. I see. Um, UCI that I recognize. Yeah. So it looks like we do have an, oh, okay. An alliance is to consider. So they have considered an alliance with UCIE. Which makes sense. So, do you have any idea um, what they mean by alliance? I do um, not know exactly what they mean. Um, no, I mean I think we 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 understand the the Linux Foundation relationship with OCP because of some of the work with Calyptra and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, some of these other things, like in the case of IEEE. Um, you know, I, I, I chair a standards committee under computer society. And so I'm, I'm directly involved in formal relationships with ISO and other entities. I, I wouldn't know how to even begin to set something up with OCP because the way they're structured. Hmm. I, I could I, imagine. I, sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, I was going to say we, we've, you know, we have alliances between like DMTF and OCP already. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. Um, I mean, probably the biggest hiccup is a, a lot of these groups like UCIE and DMTF don't actually operate, right? They don't, they don't edit specs in the open like OCP tends to do. Um, so that creates kind of a, a little bit of an interesting speed bump, but it's definitely something that can be handled. I mean, you know, that, you know, um, yeah, just thinking when a couple of weeks ago when I presented the post quantum stuff, right, that was technically part of the DMTF alliance re relationship. Yeah, I was actually just about to, to yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I think that could be an example of, of a, a productive alliance relationship, which is they do their work. Um, and when they need feedback, we have a ready group of security conscious people throughout the industry they can present to and get quick feedback on. So uh, not uh, I'm, I'm picking on the IEEE piece, um, partly because it's maybe a, a little differently. It has the ability to actually do international standards and do it jointly with you know um, ISO and IEC as well. Um, so it's got a, a lot more formality um, to it, but it's possible that experts here, depending on the other working groups that are operating, you know, can can participate in those working groups directly. So if it's a individual based member working group, then it's pretty easy to engage. From an AI perspective, there's an entire standards committee that's already you know, stood up and and it's working closely with the subcommittee 42 in, in ISO IEC JTC1. So there's a huge amount of, of AI work underway in ISO as well as IEEE. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure how, whether there'd be a desire to sort of tap into that. I mean, they've been they've been basically running for five years. Okay. In fact, if you wanted to see sort of the ISO portfolio, you can just Google um, SE forty two ISO SE forty two, and you can see um, you know they'll have a link that'll show you all the published standards and all the drafts that are underway so that's you know, if you wanted to see kind of what kind of work is being done that's that's a quick way to you know check that yeah so if you scroll down <laughs> um <clears throat> if you click on the published iso standards you know scroll up a little bit yeah, right there so if you click the 30 that'll tell you what's published and if you clicked on the 32 
that'll tell you what's what's under development right now. Yeah, triple E side might not be quite so easy to 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 track down, you know, what they've got. But um, if if it was needed, I could probably go in and, you know, as a standards committee chair, I could I could do some snooping around to see what approved projects there are. But you, yeah. know, you can see there's a pretty pretty big portfolio here. Yeah, I just tried control fing for like security uh, or secure. I wasn't able to find much. Um... I know yeah. they're doing a lot of stuff with AI. I'm wondering if they do things that are particularly relevant for our crowd. Yeah, the security stuff is over in, in subcommittee 27. So, uh, and, but it's not a huge amount. You know, basically the 27090 and the 27091. Uh, and you could do by you could search on ISO 27090 and 27091 and see what those are. Okay, so it's yeah, generic guidance for security threats. Um, okay, so I'm I'm thinking I'm this is completely off the cuff, but uh, we if we wanted to do some some AI work, right? We can we can you know. Uh, let's see. There's general high-level guidance we could provide, which but it looks like this is that. So uh, I'm not sure what this looks like, but that, that was their goal is to provide general high-level guidance. Um, we can provide high-level requirements, uh, which could be informed and help adhere to the guidance. We can provide low level uh, low level requirements, uh, which that kind of is what we're doing with like attestation 1.1. Like here, you have to support these SPDM commands, um, which we do need to revisit uh, soon. So I apologize for not having that um, brought up more recently. I'm not sure if anyone has any other thoughts to riff on that line. Okay. So, so Jeff, I, I prepared a <clears throat> summary for the American, American Bar Association, um, you know, about six or nine months ago, where I, I went into a significant number of these um, projects and at least grab the abstracts, which which tell you kind of what's in the documents. And I think I pulled that all together in a single file. Uh, is is that something that there might be an interest in here? Or um... I think that would be so as in this would be like an overview of what ISO is working on. Yeah. Uh, so basically I looked at the SE42 projects and I looked at the IEEE um you know, AI standards committee. Um, and it probably wouldn't take a whole lot of work on my part to, uh, you know, just do a quick sanity check on, on, you know, the content, you know, it, it, what's changed, you know, so there's some stuff that's probably published now that wasn't when I, when I did it. And there may be some additional projects that have been added on, on sort of both sides of the fence, but, you know, I, I, I hate to see duplication of work but it can be uh, difficult to figure out what what's in motion, what there is. Um, I have access to, at least on the ISO side, most of the documents that are at least three publication versions of, of the documents, just because of you know, my involvement with ISO. IEEE is a little trickier. Mm -hmm. 
but um, I could I could pull that together. I did give a very short talk at a SNEA event um, earlier this year that, that touched on the 27090 and 91 projects at the time. Mm -hmm. That And that could be, you know, shared as well. That, so, yeah, I, I think I would generally agree that that would be uh, useful to let us know what other groups are working on in this space. Okay. So, like, thank you for the offer. All right, I'm just going to pop back to this one. So I would invite folks to think about focus areas of ours and what might be prioritized in light of a focus on AI. So we can revisit. I uh, think this will probably be a shorter meeting unless uh, folks have. Uh, is this is this deck available? Yes, yes. So I will. Okay. I will actually. I'll send this. Right now. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send that right after the, the call concludes. Any other thoughts uh, for anyone while we are together? Um, Jeff, I, I, I'll, I'll reach out to you separately, but just as a heads up, I, again, wearing my IEEE hat, I just got contacted about a, uh, somebody inquiring about a hardware, a little hardware bomb, basically, and um, maybe doing a standard net space. And, and I know there's been some work here in the past. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll shoot you uh, sort of a summary and see what your reaction is. But that uh, that's the first time I've seen something like that in the, in the formal standardization side. Um, so I'm kind of curious whether, whether OCP, if something like this were to happen, whether or not some of the work was done here might piggyback on that. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. So, so, so does this work also involve attestation of AI models? Um, I, I don't know a whole lot about it. This is something that um, some work that was being done within CISA in the, okay. you know, the U.S. security organization, the U.S. government. Okay. Um, and and it's not strictly cybersecurity they're looking for a home for it, but um, in the past the supply chain security stuff has has landed in subcommittee twenty seven on the ISO side. Um, they're not currently looking to take it to ISO. They think I actually may be a you know a, a better home for it, but that's about all I know right now. Yeah. But I know there was a lot of work, a lot of thinking here. So if, if something that did start up, um, you know, it might you know people that are working here might might want to um, participate in that that activity. I guess uh, some of this related will also be related to confidential computing, where you have to uh, run this uh, a, uh, ML model or AI ML model in a secure container or environment, those kind of stuff. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing where I, I doubt we'd want to do much specifically to attest to an AI model versus any other kind of workload you'd run in a confidential environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but attesting to yeah. uh, modeling uh, and testing confidential environment will will help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, just I was thinking that just uh, like I actually I joined a little bit late, so I was just thinking that maybe attestation, uh, update of AI model, secure update of AI model, and those kind of things and uh, secure compute, all those kind of will be of interest from security point of view. Yeah, I, th I think you need to kind of draw a cut line between the infrastructure side and the, the software side of things when you get into this. And then I don't know that OCP wants to wade into the provenance topic when you get to, to models and data. I think you leave that to the higher order software mm -hmm. world and you focus on nailing down the confidential compute and it feels like 
to get that really across the goal line, probably one of the primary push points it, it would seem right now is to just get T-disc going a little bit faster because it's still relatively new. And, <clears throat> you know, the, you know, Synopsis has some IP out there, but, you know, this is, that's going to be, that, that closes the, the gap to the physical attack topic. And that probably would be a good push point for, for this group mm -hmm. um, in the context of just, you know, what OCP is about. Is there, uh, I guess I'm wondering to anyone in particular, like what can we do as a group to speed things along with TDISP? I'm not familiar with the, the, the bottlenecks there. I just think it's a, it's an adoption, it's an adoption implementation, you know, challenge really at this point. So, you know, okay. it, it would get into that. I guess if you were to say, okay, OCP has this, has a statement and a position around confidential compute. And when you look at CC in its totality, then, you know, it goes beyond just the, the CPU enclaves and you've got to tie the whole thing together. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be the, the plumbing that kind of accomplishes that. So maybe it's, you know, I think you can make an argument that, you know, AIML is just another workload and all the, all the ongoing effort around confidential compute, whether it's a general purpose workload or AI, it, it doesn't really matter. You've got to finish off the infrastructure and mm -hmm. that's really the, the crux of the issue, at least in my mind, 50 cents worth. Okay. I mean, yeah. So one thing we could, put out is like a referendum on say, hey, if you want to do AI securely, here's what we need to button up on the platform side. We need confidential compute. We need attestation, verification, plumbing. We need TDISP support on the hardware. Um, and then that could, you know, seed uh, requirements throughout. Uh, if that sounds interesting to anyone to hold the pen on that, you know, feel free to reach out. Any other thoughts on this? Okay. Uh, well, I would like, so uh, we'll call it a day for now. Um, I think I'll, I'd like to plan on uh, revisiting Attestation 1.1 next week and having the conversation about SPDM and CSRs. I think there was a few questions that were raised last time we discussed. We can revisit those and look through them. Uh, we might not have all the answers that we wanted from last time. I think there was some homework to go figure out what tooling does. Let's go follow up with that. Any other topics before we adjourn? Okay. Well, thank you all for the time and thanks everyone for the very helpful input. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you.